So what I didn't show you was the mess at getting the nut off and then the pulley off on most of these. Only one came off out of six that was halfway decent. And I'll throw some pictures in about the differences between these spindles. So I might have to do some searching to figure out which set goes together. But I got the key out of there already. And this is the, these are the center spindles. So the two center ones were serviceable, I believe. I mean, they're sort of rough looking, but I think they'll be serviceable. New bearings and stuff like that. So what I do is just press them out from here. You can see here, I'm trying to press the shaft out of the mandrel. And this particular design of the mandrel does not have a retainer clip or ring on the bottom of it like most of the other ones do. So I ended up pushing the whole bearing out on the shaft. So I had to get that separated, which is comes later in the video. And also, as you can see, I'm using a socket to press the rest of this thing through. Obviously, there's probably better tools for this, but I just simply use what I have and try to make that work. I know there's, you know, I'm working all the time on different things and I'm using, you know, tools in different ways or whatever. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time it does work. And I know there's, you know, other tools that I can get to do these things. But at the same time, you know, these are the items I have. So they're the ones I'm using. And, you know, it is what it is. And then, as you can see, here too, oops, there's this one right here. So that's a ring all the way around, ends right there. So we'll flip that out too. And, well, I, I, I've never had this happen before, so we're going to have to figure out how to get that bearing off of there. And I did clean this one out. I'll still clean this one out. There's still a bunch of junk in here, as you can see. But, you know, I'm using one hand to do the camera, so you're probably not going to actually get this on. I probably won't actually get this on video, so I'll get the clean version of it so you see what it looks like. So those are the center pulleys, or the center mandrels that have the double pulley, and then these were the, the smaller ones. And, they again, they don't have a uh, retainer ring there. Uh, this one's so full of junk, I need to clean that out. Same with this one. But you can see the, the retainer ring there. And I guess you can see some of it here on this side. But these are going to require a fair amount of work. I do have, this one looks like it's pulled up like that. actually looks like the thing has come out. Yeah, that might be easy, easy to get out, but it's probably busted, which is fine. I have extra parts from other tractors. Now, here too, that... Does not scare me that much. That is just as, you know, some, you know, maybe higher than normal wear and tear, but it's acceptable. This one worries me a little bit more. This one's a little more eaten up. I mean, it's not a huge deal, I don't think, but just very ugly looking. So I'm not sure how I'll approach that if I'll try to find a replacement one or not. Okay, so I almost forgot I had this sucker. The bearing separator and puller set. So as you can see, what I'm going to do is just tighten it now. And then it should pull up on the bearing enough to get it to where maybe I can put the other puller on it that goes over and then pulls it out this way. So that'll squeeze it out of there. And then I can actually add stuff under it, I guess, too. But I prefer just to, I prefer to break loose pretty easily so I can just pull it off. We'll see. So I apologize for not getting all this, but this this is the ring that comes out of there. I was about to pull that ring out of there. You can see it looks like it's going to come out of there pretty easily. So thank goodness for that, I guess. And then I just have to press out the bearings in each one. I could not get that bearing as separated as much as I wanted to. So I'm soaking all four shafts in the... Uh, uh, part cleaner right here or parts cleaner and uh so we'll see how they come out hopefully maybe that'll help free it up or maybe not who knows i think it's pretty dirty so probably at the point in time where i need to get rid of it but anyway that's where i am with this right now trying to 
take these things apart piece by piece. And I'll have a 46 inch deck tear down too coming up because I'm trying to send the 50 inch and the 46 inch deck to the powder coat guy at the same time. Okay, so I haven't shown you this before. This is on a, another set of spindles, but see this break in the ring? This ring goes all the way around, but there's a gap right there you can see. So you can see there's a slight curve right there. And we'll do this. Slight curve right here. And so you're supposed to get the screwdriver up in there and then pop that ring out. So we'll see if we can do that. So I have my reading glasses on so I can see this. And then I take have it in the bench bench vise. Ah, jeez. Let me try to get it in there. Oh, oh, wow. I got lucky there. This is, I've actually been fighting this. I just decided I better put this on the video because it's actually a part of it. So there it is. That was super quick, actually. And then there's one... There's a retainer down there too to keep that bearing in place and then this one just stays in there with the you know with the bottom up well not the top of it anyways you get the you get the idea so here i'm just using the bench vise to hold the mandrel in place and then just knock the bearings out of either side just make sure that your retainer clips aren't in there and this will go pretty easily Hey folks, so the first step is to, I'm going to start from the bottom. This is the bottom of it, so it goes like that. And you'll see there's a groove in there, and that's where the retainer goes. But first, we're going to bust open our OEM bearings. And I've used the other bearings before, like one-off bearings, and or off-brand bearings, whatever you want to call them. And they have been... Uh, okay, but not as good as these bearings. So these bearings seem to fit just a little bit better than the other ones. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to use these. And what I do to squish them down there is to use one of these. I think I will have to use some other things eventually. But... My best recommendation is to stick with the OEM bearings, which are made in Romania. They tend to be a lot better fit and finish than the Chinese made non-OEM bearings, if a little pricier. All right, so that's recessed in there, and we'll stick this in. And basically what we do is just slip it in there, or we'll probably use a screwdriver. I apologize for not getting this on the video. And there you go. So that thing's secure. Now there's a little spacer that goes in here, as you probably saw when we took them out, but now this is a lot cleaner, and then there's a bearing that goes here, and then we'll put the shaft through there. So, so the bearings are JD 9296s, and then often you can reuse these, but I figured I would, I've had these for a while and just haven't used them, and this is the deck that I'm going to do a complete uh, rebuild on. So this is M73513, and this is the... The spacers, I did have some issues with the spacers on some of the decks I took apart. Some of these things were just too far separated. So I figured I would go ahead and finally put these to use. And so they'll... So what I'll do is we'll just put it in there. And then we squish the bearing in. I'm gonna Okay, and what I do is that this bearing, this side does not have the retainer, so we're going to smush this down. If we're not careful, we could push out that bearing. This bearing up here will stay in the same spot, but this one down here just doesn't have a retainer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the little circle on these uh, little things, put the bearing right there, so then 
Actually, I think we're gonna do the little triangle. So it grabs the bearing. I think that's what I've done before. And then put it together. And then basically the only thing that's gonna slip through is the shaft. So once you do your first or second one, this process becomes really easy to do. It's basically just waiting for the hydraulic press to do its job. So that's good. Spins freely. Without any problems, then I'll just clean up this end. And it probably goes without saying, but I'll say it anyways, you want to go pretty easy at first, make sure the thing is seating in there correctly. Because you don't want to waft your bearing. I'm just greasing the items here to make sure they're good to go. And that again is the spacer, the, obviously the spacer on the bigger mandrel is uh, bigger than the average size one. And we'll put that in there. So as I'm pressing this one down, this is the second bearing that's going into the mandrel. We're going to press it down not all the way tight because we want to make sure that we have some leeway to line up the shaft going through the spacer. Uh, remember that each bearing is solid up against the walls of that mandrel, but the spacer kind of floats in the middle that takes up the space for where the shaft goes. So just keep keep that in mind. Always. Now I've done this before a number of times, but always not exactly. I don't do it enough to really get good at it, I guess. So, obviously we're not going to press it into the thing, so we're going to just get it seated there a little bit, and then we'll take it out and reposition it. Obviously this will keep going into the cast iron here if we're not, not paying attention. So while this hydraulic press is handy, it does have its limitations. You'll see that I'm constantly moving the base up and down and, you know, relieving the pressure and then building the pressure back up. So, you know, some of you will probably have much nicer pieces of equipment, but this one, you know, works just fine for these small projects that I have. So... Now you might be asking, they're basically the same, except for one thing, well sort of two things. This one comes with a double pulley at the top, but also the center spindles come with an extra washer that goes like right there. So you, the other ones don't need the washer, but this one, uh, you know, looking at the parts diagram and how I took them apart, there's an actual washer in there for all of them. This actually, the washer, I might need to get like a thicker one. I think this one actually is supposed to be a little thicker than that. But that's, you know, trying to find it. And they're actually not called washers. I can't remember what the name for them is. Maybe I'll find it out before I, uh, you know, get with the, uh, before I finalize the video editing or whatever. So this one spins freely as well. So, all right, folks, so this is the last thing to do is to just put the pulley on the shaft here. We'll just take this nut off. And then I have a couple older ones that are fine. This one's probably the best one right here. You could grease these if you wanted to, but you don't necessarily have to. Actually, there's plenty of grease in there already. Probably from when I was doing the installing the other stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this brass hammer to tap that in. Oops. As you can see, it's in there. It's got the grease on it. 
which again is probably not that necessary, but we'll actually put some grease on the on the shaft, make it probably a little nicer to go on there. Grease never hurt. And then you see where the key goes right there, obvious, sort of, but uh, in case it wasn't. And you can spin this until it You kind of feel it around. Or maybe not. Where are you? Okay, so we'll try to. Try to bias it a little bit down so they'll slip in there. There we go. And if you can get it kind of through there now, this will probably squish that cap. But You can press it down with the hydraulic press, or sometimes you get lucky and you can just slide it down this way. I had to do this, but that'll work. I'll get rid of those posts. That works just fine. And then the whole thing is on. Still rotates nice and smooth. I did booger up the little piece right there, but that's okay because we have to clean this up and then I'll actually hit the nut too as soon as I get it tight. So what I'll probably do is just hit it with the impact wrench and then paint it and it's it'll be done. That is how you put the double pulley on and the regular pulley is just the same. Well, that concludes part two. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please hit the like button. And if you wanted to see more videos about these kind of John Deere tractors, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. And hopefully in the next couple weeks, I'll have part three coming your way.